The truth hurts, and the truth is that Trey Lance is going to be the best quarterback from this upcoming draft, this past draft class. Okay, yes, that is a very, very good pick. I do like Trey Lance. The co the spot he's been put in, any rookie QB would love to be put in a spot with how the great coach Kyle Shanahan, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, that O line. Well, I wouldn't say it's a gr the best place because I mean, San Francisco has a. A lot of injuries, and they've had a lot of injuries for the past couple of years. Uh, but overall, because Trey Lance needs to bake for a bit, he needs a bit of time because he's coming out of North Dakota State uh, after opting out during COVID because North Dakota didn't really have a season. They had one game. He looked bad in that game, but he still opted out anyway because he has an athletic ability that it doesn't matter how many games he was going to play. Everyone was going. He was going to go in the same place whether he played another season or another two if he so he took the opportunity jumped to the nfl right now he lands in a great spot because he can sit behind jimmy g this year but jimmy g is not the best me of mentors i well i'd have jimmy g i'd have jimmy g as a mentor i mean he he was in new england for a couple years with bill belichick and tom brady i mean those are two of the best people uh, I mean, if you're what, a quarterback that you're gonna get what i'm trying to say is look at what how jimmy g has played these past few games he has not played really good they had trey lance play against the texans and he looked pretty good but the qb i think will be the best qb from this draft class down the line trevor lawrence People are not. People are thinking he is wa washed. He's okay. He's people, already been ruined. People think he's already like done because he was already in a bad situation with a bad coach, injuries with DJ Shard, James Robinson not getting the James Robinson not getting the ball, Marvin Jones not there. It's really just the Jaguars are a terrible organization. If they do get an O line and maybe keep their weapons, I think Trevor Lawrence will shine. They could. He could bring the Jaguars to the playoffs and say two I think, or three years. I think using the excuse that he was put in a bad situation is... If Trey is, Lance is, was put in this situation, he would not be good either. That's because the difference is, you know, Lawrence, three-year starter at Clemson, Lance, one-year starter. But the thing is, I don't... I think Trevor Lawrence was put in a bad situation because of Urban Meyer, but... You're going to tell me that roster is bad. You're going to tell me Lakeisha Chenault, DJ Chark, Marvin Jones, James Robinson. Also, Those are a lot of good skill players, and he hasn't put up a touchdown since October. That's unacceptable. Well, also think about it. Look at the teams they have played. They have played the Bills. They have played the Patriots. They have played a lot of teams. And also, look, their O-line is not as good as the Niners' O-line. If you think about it, the Niners' O-line is three times, maybe even four times better than the Jaguars' O-line. And that's just putting it kindly. Trevor Lawrence keeps getting pressure, and that's why he's throwing picks. Look at Jaguars. The J Jaguars drafted uh, the lineman from Stanford, uh, Walker Little, I believe. Uh, and I think I don't know if he's starting. I don't think so right now. But I think you know he's going to help be a tackle towards their future. I think they're going to build, uh, depending on who they hire. That's another question of Maybe. entirely because you know they go out, they hire, you know. Uh, are the Bills offensive coordinator or the Chiefs offensive coordinator. You know, hire a good young coach. That's what I think this team needs. This team doesn't need a Marvin Lewis. It, it needs a it needs a young coach because what what's what do you have to lose at this point? At this point there is nothing to lose for the Jaguars. But see speaking of hiring a quarterback, the Bears need a better quarterback not a better quarterback, a better head coach and Matt Nagy is not the solution. Do you think Jim Harborough, the Michigan head coach, will be the Bears head coach for the future. I think this is ridiculous. There is no reason that Jim Harbaugh would want to leave the University of Michigan. During I think I think I think if he had really wanted to leave, he would have left last year. He wouldn't have taken a pay cut because he could have found a job somewhere else, even after a down year in Michigan because of his history. I don't think he wants to leave the University of Michigan. And even if he did, even if he did want to leave the University of Michigan, which he doesn't, uh why would he go to the Bears? The Bears are in a terrible position. They're without a first-round pick. Sure, they have Justin Fields, but they have a lot of holes on their roster that they're going to be struggling to fill. And, well, here's the thing. Jim Harborough, during the Georgia game, during like one of the talks with a reporter, he said that this may be his last game in Michigan. The Bears, he would love to be in the NFL to play against his brother, John Harborough. It would be amazing to see him try and make this Bears team thrive. He, I think he could. He can build around Justin Fields. He can build 
around Mooney. He can build. They have they defense. have building blocks, but I don't see any reason that he would jump. I think. Uh, I, mean, I think he's built a he's built a really strong roster. He's just finally gotten over the hump. He's just finally beaten Ohio State. He's got McCarthy uh, for the next couple years. There's no reason for him to leave. He's in a great position, even though Michigan's recruiting itself. You know, they're they're not as good as Ohio State. But guess what? They're still able to compete. They're still able to beat them in these situations. I mean, the only player that I think is going to be leaving Michigan is Aiden Hutchinson, that uh, defensive edge. Hutchinson's. Hutchinson's gonna go. He's gonna declare. He's gonna go number one overall. He's I going mean, to the Jaguars. Either one or two. Either that. Either he goes first, or that Oregon edge will go first. I d- no. I don't. I don't see Theodox going because Theodox had a relative down. Theodox was great. Theodox is good. I think Theodox is a better player than Aiden Hutchinson. But when you know relevant, you know the recency bias is going to have someone rather select the man who this year just put on a great show, Heisman runner up to Bryce Young. Uh, but I think even though you got Evan Neal from Alabama, who the Jaguars could use, I think the prospect of passing up on uh, Those two an edge three. rusher to go with Josh Allen on that defensive line is too good. Too good to pass up. I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Uh, if they do go with an O line, that will go back to my topic with saying Trevor Lawrence could thrive in Jacksonville, but I believe that the chances of them passing up on an edge rusher is not that good. They want to pair Josh Allen with someone really good for the future. They want to do what the Panthers did with Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick. They want to they want to make whoa, this whoa, defense whoa. like they let's, used to. Let's 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 not compare them to the Panthers because that is not a situation you want to be in right Brian now. Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick, they both combined for like. 16 sacks? They're, 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 they're good, but you don't want to compare a situation where you're bringing in a college coach like, you know, Matt Rule, like Matt Rule with the, where they did in Carolina. You don't want another situation like that. You look at Carolina right now. What do you got? You've got a two quarterback system. You've got a head coach who isn't confident in any of his players, That's and perfect. there's not really much he can do about it right now, but it'll be interesting to the see one, the who one. they go. Let me, let me transition this into who they go at QB. Because if are they going to draft QB, are they going to keep Darnold for another year? I think they will either go with a QB, or if Evan Neal or that NC State lineman is still on the board. I don't think Evan Neal's going to be on the board if at Evan seven. If Evan Neal is on the board, which very much surprised me, because last year, Penny, Penny Sewell was still on the board when near the Panthers draft pick until the Lions picked him, which very much surprised me. So they could probably, again, an O-lineman may fall with that high of talent and... Skill, true. You, especially last year when teams passed up, especially t- uh, teams yeah. needing offensive linemen like the Dolphins and the, uh, and the Bengals. Well, the Bengals, the Bengals, they really the Bengals, have paid out. The, the Bengals are all right at tackle. And they spent their second round pick on a guard. The guard hasn't panned out, uh, but you know, Jamar Chase has Jamar Chase. been special. So we're not. I'm not going to knock them, special but the I think I don't think Carolina should go for a quarterback because I don't think it solves I think it creates the problem that you're currently in that you're in with the you know I mean right now they're playing Bridgewater they're paying Newton they're paying uh, Sam Darnold you really want to add another quarterback to that you want to add another quarterback situation where you've got a coach who obviously can't manage a quarterback competition correctly you want to give him another quarterback to throw into that ring yes I think I want to because Cam Cam Newton's not going to be here next year I don't think they're going to resign him Sam Darnold's only got one more year, and then he's gone. P.J. Walker is probably going to come back because, really, P.J. Walker needs just one more, a couple more games to finally get recognition for how he plays. He plays good, but he he's just not been shown with the talent. The QB, I think the Panthers will go. It is not Matt Corral. I think it is Kenny Pickett from Pitt. He is really good. You may – I know what you're about to say. He is old. He's a super senior. But no, look at his get, look at his year this year. He had 43 touchdowns on 4,300 yards, only in seven picks. Look at another QB who can do that. Matt Corral is very overrated. He threw too many picks against that Baylor defense, which re- really wasn't that good. Then look at how uh, who was it? You're you're thinking Malik Willis. He's the answer. Well, he only had one good season, and that was with Liberty after being 
the ba- the backup for Bo Nix at Auburn. Well, I wasn't going to knock the Kenny Pickett selection. Uh, I was going to first ask, uh, do you think they would trade back? Because I think seven for Pickett is quite high. I think they have the fifth overall pick right now. I may not be correct on that. They're currently at seven. They're currently at seven? Currently sitting Maybe at seven. they'll trade back a spot or two. Not to the Falcons, because the Falcons could probably take... Uh, Kenny Pickett with how Matt Ryan. Why is. would the Fal? Why would the Falcons take Kenny Pickett? That Matt doesn't Ryan make any is, sense. Matt well, Matt Ryan's, Ryan's getting Matt Ryan's getting 36. old. Matt Ryan's getting old, but he's got a fifty million dollar cap hit, so he's gonna be on your roster next year. So do you really want to draft the quarterback who's probably one of the most ready quarterbacks? He's the oldest. He's twenty three. Uh, you really want to make him sit another year before starting? Well, who would you rather sit? Would you rather sit Mac? Well, you 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 already knocked Malik Willis and uh the the one good season thing. I'd like to point out that you know Trey Lance one good season. I mean that's the only season he played. Uh, Zach Wilson one good season. Okay, so who are the teams that Liberty played? I mean I can't name them, but listen, do you, do you want to know? Yeah, thank you for looking that up. Do you want to know who? Trey Lance played at North Dakota State. Then he the best, the best team he played was South Dakota State. South Dakota State in the FCS. That was the best team that he played. He would have actually played Oregon. They were scheduled to play against Oregon before COVID canceled the season. But what I'm saying is it doesn't matter for an athletic prospect. For someone like Carson Strong, you know, it's a bit risky because he's had one season, you know, or, you know, he's a big strong arm. He might have had one more okay. than one season. But, you know, playing in a smaller division as a strong arm quarterback is a lot more dangerous. When you're an athletic specimen, your your playmaking will transfer no matter where you go. Because you got to remember, he was recruited to Auburn. He was going to play in the SEC. But, you know, he was sitting behind Bo Nix. He wanted to go somewhere else, so he left. He went to Liberty. He found an opportunity, and he capitalized on it. With over 800 rushing yards this year, that's insane. It is very insane, but the team, the only team that they played that was really good, well, no, there's actually two. It's Ole Miss and Louisiana. Those are the only two good teams they have played, and they did not show really that much. They only put True. up a combined. The game against Ole Miss was a rather poor showing. And then for, the game against Louisiana was way worse. Rather basically. poor showing for Malik Wills, but it's also a poor showing for Matt Coral. I think both quarterbacks in that game uh, well, failed okay. to perform to expectations. Malik Willis went 16 for 25 with 173 yards and three picks against the Ole Miss defense. How did Matt Corral do? He had 324 passing yards with one touchdown and 20 completed passes on 37 attempts. Matt Corral, that was probably one of the games I was like, all right, he may be good. He's not good now. Well, speaking of, you know, Ole Miss and the SEC, let's jump on over to the, the Bama-Georgia rematch. As, as we know, Georgia beat Michigan in the... Uh, semifinal game uh, and Alabama beat Cincinnati and so they're set for a rematch against uh, each other and same thing as the SEC championship game where Alabama destroyed Georgia what do you think going into this how do you think Georgia's gonna come at it different all right so with Georgia they have they have all the talent that anybody any team could have if let's say how with Michigan if they had the same defensive intensity offensive intensity that they had maybe that game would have been a lot better but no, Georgia is just Georgia. They've been dominant all year, except when it comes to like other SEC powerhouses. They struggle. They didn't. They only put up 34 against Auburn, and Auburn scored 10. I didn't. I, I'm an Auburn fan myself, and I was pretty disappointed in Georgia. There, you can't give up 10 to an Auburn team that had Bo Nix, and Bo Nix threw like a pick in that game, even though Bo Nix was. Bo Nix was missing from the Alabama game, wasn't he? Uh, yes, and that's why they had T.J. Finley in, and I'm so surprised right there. T.J. Finley was doing good until he got hurt. Listen, maybe they could have had Malik Willis if he hadn't transferred in that right, game if they had given him right. some playing time. They Maybe they would have beat Alabama if they had Malik Willis. But back also, on track, um, Georgia's dominance uh, this season has come, you know, mostly against rather weaker teams. You know, they've played. I mean, they've played okay. some. They've played some solid teams. They've played some, okay. but for the most part, the SEC teams. Uh, they didn't play Ole Miss this I season. They played Ole Miss. No, they played Kentucky. They played uh, Arkansas. the Razorbacks. Yeah, Ar- Arkansas. They played. 
And, you know, these are solid teams, but, you know, when you compare it to, you know, like an Alabama squad, it's nothing. And so I think Georgia going into this has to realize that they might have to, you know, because their identity is a run game. They might have to throw that away. They might have to put in JT Daniels because Stenson, I mean, Stenson Bennett against Michigan was able to throw very well because, you know, they were able to establish that power run game. I don't think they'll be able to establish that run game against Alabama. They weren't able to do it last time. They lost by over 20 what makes you think they're going to be able to establish it this time? Never, you got to put in JT Daniels. I believe you right there. But with how Bama is and Nick Saban, they are always prepared for it. Nick Saban has been into the in this situation time and time again. He was in it last year. He was in it the year before that. He's been in it for like almost a decade and a half with how good this Bama squad is and how they keep recruiting. They are going to be a dynasty. It doesn't matter how many teams, how many players come and go, how many they can stay. It just depends right now. Does Nick Saban know what Georgia has coming into this game? And I think he does. Well, I think Georgia in the game in the SEC championship game really failed to cover Williams, who Cincinnati, you know, Sauce Gardner was really able to shut him down. You know, Williams was a transfer from from Ohio State, wasn't getting enough playing time there, uh, and so he decided to transfer on over to Alabama. But you know, you look over at Ohio State, the performance in the Rose Bowl, specifically JSN, with over 300 receiving yards. That's insane. That is very insane. That Utah secondary better have heard it from that from the defensive coach, because if I was that defensive defensive coordinator or coach i would have just said all right boys you're not you're not talking to your girlfriends you're not talking with your family you're going straight back to work because you cannot let one receiver put up 300 almost 350 yards of reset receiving the and with three touchdowns that's ridiculous the other two of the the big three receivers that Ohio State has had opted out of that game because they're both draft eligible they're both going to declare it makes sense that they opt out of the game that doesn't make it an excuse for why, you know, all the load that the, they were sharing was more put on JSN because of that, but that doesn't make it acceptable because you've got you've got two of the targets eliminated. You've got one big target that you know you're going to have to cover going into that game. You know, I mean, I know they hadn't officially declared Olave out until close to closer to the game time, but you still should have planned a bit better. Uh, you, you blew a 14-point lead. Yeah, uh, I still don't know how they blew that lead. It is ridiculous how this Utah team, who I thought they were going to be really good in this bowl game, they just did not live up to the hype, did not live up to expectations, and they choked it to Ohio State. I think the difference is, you know, Utah is a Pac-12 team. The Pac-12 don't have defenses. They don't play with a defense. They They're an offense-oriented of team, and, you know, uh, Ohio State, once their offense got going, you know, it's it becomes shootout. Who has the better offense? Well, Ohio State has the better offense. They have more recruits. They have better developing than a Utah squad that's up and coming still. And, well, okay, if you've both got really good offenses, who's got the better defense? Well, they don't play defense in the Pac-12. And so Ohio State had the better defense. They were able to hold them to field goals rather than touchdowns, and that was really what made the difference in this game. That's really did what made the difference in this game. Speaking of which, uh... With how Ohio State has played, do you think they could be back in the playoffs next year? Yeah, of course. They're going to be back in the playoffs next year. I mean, that's not even really much of a question. I think it's 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 not an if, it's a when, it's a how. It's a, uh, what's this Michigan squad going to be ranked going into next year after their loss to Georgia? Because, you know, Michigan's going to play Ohio State. Can Mich- You know, Michigan's not going to lose games easily. They're probably going to end up with another 12, 11 or so win season next year and so when they go into that rivalry weekend game against Ohio State I expect it's probably going to be two high ranked squads and whichever one wins 100% going to the playoffs I think you're probably going to end up once again you're going to have you're going to have two SEC schools in you're going to have the Big Ten champion in probably uh, probably Ohio State over Michigan I would maybe say an and SEC? then yeah you you might be looking at a Clemson maybe or a Notre Clemson Dame could come back I really do think Clemson's going to bounce back from their terrible year this year I think they will finally show that they don't need a big QB name like Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson to finally be back in this playoff they have their big QB it's and DJ DJ, I can't pronounce his last name. DJ something. Uh, but he he struggled this year, you know, in his first year in action. I expect him to do better next year. But another team that 
could be looking in, you know, Cincinnati once again could be looking at the playoff picture, knocking on their door. Uh, but is another Notre Dame, and I don't get what the playoff committee likes about Notre Dame because they have every single they are o, they are zero and eight in their last eight bowl in their bowl games. They are an over they are an overachieving team. They don't play anyone special, but they're given special priorities in the playoff season. Because they're like well, they're in the aren't they in a conference where it's just no they're, yeah they're in the Independence League. They're not in a conference. Yeah, that's like with Liberty as well, but. Notre Dame just gets special special treatment just like Bama. Bama, when they lost to Texas A&M, they only dropped down like... Dropped down four rankings, dropped down to number five, Bill, losing to an unranked squad. And then, like, Oregon, they lost to an unranked squad. They went from second to 11. Well, I, I'm, I'm not going to bash that because I think the playoff committee has a really clear job. Uh, well, that was actually the AP when, the, when they dropped, but the AP and the playoff committee, they have a really clear job they're trying to see who's the best team and it doesn't matter that alabama lost because they are very clearly a better squad they had an off game okay so if you're saying oregon if they beat bama would bama drop i don't think so if oregon if oregon played bama and oregon beat bama i would still rank bama over oregon Mm. i think you rematch that game a couple days later and and bama's gonna win it i think so too all right, now off. Now let's stop with the college talk for a minute. Let's go back to the NFL with. All right, so Ben Roethlisberger's next last game at maybe his last game at Heinz Field coming up tonight. How do you think he's going to come into this game? I don't know what you want me to say. I think they're going to come in with the same game plan they always do. I think they were looking at uh, actually giving Ben Roethlisberger the keys to the offense because what they're doing with Matt Canada simply isn't working. And it's not working because Ben Roethlisberger isn't a mobile quarterback. They got a, they got an offensive coordinator who wants to run those jet sweeps. He wants to run those option plays. But they have a quarterback who can't do that. And so that that's conflict of interest right there. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I do think those the Steelers are probably going to beat the Browns tonight because very simply it's Baker Mayfield as quarterback. You, he can't Baker Mayfield it. is so injured he should not be playing. Uh, I bet good money if I was the Browns QB I would at least lead them to a nine and eight season unlike what Baker Mayfield is doing as the no, quarterback. No, that's that's just not accurate. Sure. But looking at the AFC the. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals have clinched the division. The and Ravens, are, Ravens, Steelers, Browns are still looking in. They still nope, Browns, Browns were eliminated with the uh, eliminated? with the loss of the Denver Broncos uh, on Sunday. And so they are out of the playoff picture. So they're, they're, they're not playing for the playoffs anymore. They're now playing as a spoiler. And if the Steelers win in, if they win out, I believe they, still get it, they can still get in. But... You know, they're going to be facing two tough AFC North squads. Those games are always an interesting game to watch. You know, they got the game against the Browns tonight, but then they also have the game against the Ravens next week, and it'll be interesting to see. Is it Tyler Huntley? Is it Lamar Jackson? Uh, I think Lamar Jackson's going to try and come back. I, with how Tyler Huntley's playing, he plays really good. But against the Rams, he really did not show that he was the QB right for them. He threw picks. He could convert in the red zone which is very much ridiculous as a QB, especially when I'm an Auburn fan and I watched TJ Finley go like 0 for 7 in the second half in the red zone, which was, quite frankly, very sad to watch. But back to Tyler Huntley. Do the Ravens keep him? Um, he's a restricted free agent, actually, because he was signed as an undrafted free agent. So, yes, they will retain him, uh, bec- but... But would they want some draft capital if any teams would like him? Say, if any team is willing to take him, I think they would take the draft capital uh, willingly, very willingly, actually. But, because you look at who they had last year. They were emphatic with Trace McSorley. This year, they, they let him go because they got this guy. They're going to find someone. They're just going to find someone who's rather athletic with a medium-sized arm, and that's going to be their backup. It's, it's a very good... Since they have Mark Andrews. Exactly. It's very very easy to repeat i mean no one's ever going to be the same as lamar jackson you know tyler huntley oh my god it's not lamar jackson but he's trying his best because the game plan the game plan changes slightly but not really because they're trying to have a quarterback whose job is to mimic uh lamar jackson and i don't think that works really well as a backup quarterback when your job is to try like you're trying to mimic the the offense but you know when you know lamar jackson is just built so differently that you really can't mimic him yeah, that is very true. Even though he does play similar to Lamar Jackson, he just cannot be the next Lamar Jackson. 
with that, I think if the Ravens want draft capital or they want to try and make, get an O lineman to pair with Ronnie Stanley when he returns, I think. He- I don't think I don't think any team is going to go out of their way to give a first or a second or a third round pick for Tyler Huntley. I, don't I think, think you're maybe looking a at their. Or fifth. There are a lot of quarterbacks in the drafts, and, you know, it's really hard to separate which ones are which. And, you know, you have that opportunity, you know, for, you know, Sam Howell, for Malik Willis, for Kenny Pickett. You had all these other guys you can look at, and, you know, why would you spend a second-round pick to sign Tyler Huntley, who, you know, is an all-right quarterback, but he's not going to be a superstar or anything. You can use that second-round pick on the promise of something. And I think, you know, having that rookie contract, that security, you know, the cheaper uh, deal is just objectively better for any team. Well, if we're going back to, like, the trading ideal, uh, Jimmy G, his time in San Francisco is... Nice segue right there. Yeah, it's going to be long gone after this season. I think Trey Lance will finally give that be given that chance to shine next season with how the Niners have played this year even with Jimmy G I think if they put Trey Lance in and give him that opportunity with the keys of Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle if they do not get injured with that line I think they will be led to maybe at most an NFC championship appearance if they do make the Super Bowl again that is very surprising I'm going to jump back to what you were originally talking about in that sentence which is Jimmy G trade and I think this also goes back to the Tyler Huntley why would you sign a second round uh, give a second round pick away for Tyler Huntley I'd much rather have Jimmy G than Tyler Huntley Jimmy Jimmy G G is a he has been he has proven himself at the NFL level he was in New England got traded to San Francisco made them go to the Super Bowl you know he's not he's not he's not going to be a Lamar Jackson He's not going to be a superstar, but he's going to be a good, solid quarterback who's going to get you there. A team like Pittsburgh would be a really good landing spot for him. Well, I've been hearing a lot of rumors like Carolina may go get uh, their quarterback and Jimmy G, which I do not like one bit. Jimmy G needs an O-line to thrive, and the Panthers with no O-line, yeah, he's not going to thrive. He's going to get sacked time and time and time again. Look at what Joe Burrow has in Cincinnati. Same O-line like the Panthers. He got sacked three times against the Chiefs. I think you're looking at. I, I think Jimmy G just doesn't work as a scheme fit. I don't. I don't think think he would work as the type of quarterback they're looking for at all. Exactly. I think. I think Deshaun Watson is exactly what they're Wilson. looking for. Uh, Russell Wilson, uh, but I, I don't see the Panthers trading for him because I think it would be stupid to trade for a quarterback. But if you want to win now, the Panthers will... You're not going to win now. No matter if you have Deshaun Watson, no matter if you have Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, that that uh, Carolina squad is not winning the Super Bowl. Well, that was a podcast for you, and I hope you remember that the truth hurts.